Hello everyone, Abdul Rashid Jahaya here, esports entrepreneur, educator, philanthropist. Today, we're going to be going through Esports Academy, so welcome. Esports Academy is composed of two parts. On one end is the Gaming Concept 101 curriculum designed by Dr. Christy Custer as well as Dr. Michael Russell. This is a STEM accredited curriculum where I'll be teaching lessons from my personal experiences so that you can continue on your journey from going from amateur player to esports professional, whether it's on the competitive side or on the professional side. But on the other end of that is the, is the competition, brought to you proudly from Unified and the Unified Community League. But first, we have to thank those individuals who believe in this program and providing this service to you all, our sponsors. So thank you, Mick Connick Public Library. Thank you, Level Up Arena. And thank you, Unified for all that you do in the community and providing services and access to youth just like those at home like you. So let's get right to it. This is the first lesson of 11 segment series and today it's called Goal Setting and Decision Making Skills. This is important because most games are no longer just a one time play and win game. You gotta play over and over again to hone those skills and get better because we too want to see you get better because one day we want to look back and say that we taught the next grade. So within those skills there's a couple things that you can do to change. You can change settings within your hardware just like a gaming mouse like this but also you can set personal skills for yourself and set in personal goals to improve those skills. Did you know that you could take a mouse just like this and change what's called the DPI settings? This increases or decreases the sensitivities to your own personal needs, which could give you the competitive edge to shoot faster, run faster, round a corner faster, to become the best that you could possibly be. Most gaming mouses just like this will generally have one or two buttons on there that you can click over and over again as you increase that, that DPI, those DPI settings or decrease them. But don't take my word for it. I'm going to show you guys a video right now that'll go more into depth on what DPI settings can do for you. And then following that, I'll show you how you can apply it to a game that we've all grown to love, like Overwatch. So stay tuned. Go try to shop for a gaming mouse, and you'll often have someone try to sell you one based on how many DPI it's rated at. But this is actually one of the most overused, overhyped words in the gaming peripheral industry. But before we get into that, I should probably explain what DPI actually means. DPI is a misnomer when referring to mouse sensitivity. It stands for dots per inch, meaning the number of dots that can fit in a straight line, which is one inch in length on a screen or printed image. The proper name for measurement of mouse sensitivity is actually CPI or counts per inch. This is the number of counts or virtual pixels that the mouse sensor will be able to display and register on a surface in one inch of physical space. Optical sensors have a maximum native resolution or a native CPI based on the size constraints of a mouse, usually somewhere between 800 and 1600 CPI. So in order to raise the CPI beyond that level, manufacturers actually have to split each virtual representation of a pixel into four or more virtual pixels, which is why DPI, technically CPI, measurements given by manufacturers are usually in multiples of 800. Well, split away, you might be saying. Higher CPI must always be better. Eh, let's not go that far. Splitting these virtual pixels actually causes some significant issues with sensor accuracy, as having more virtual pixels creates more noise or interference, and therefore more errors when reading mouse movements. The main message here is that just because your mouse has 8,000 CPI does not mean that it's actually able to read more information than a mouse with 800 CPI. CPI is only a measurement of the relationship between how how far your mouse moves on the surface and how far your cursor moves on the screen, not a measurement of precision or accuracy. So then why do mouse manufacturers insist on releasing these mice with monstrous DPI numbers attached to them? The main reason is, as usual, marketing and branding. Being able to say, oh, we're a brand new mouse now featuring a 10 billion DPI sensor sounds much more impressive than, you know, our new mouse with like, you know, better quality switches inside it or any number of other 
features that might actually make a difference. And it's not helped by the fact that the industry created hype around this, then gamers created hype around it thinking it was good, and this creates a positive feedback loop around this feature that doesn't actually improve the product necessarily, and in some cases even makes it less accurate. The second reason is that there are some people out there who enjoy using their mouse at some ridiculous high sensitivity. Whether they use very high resolution displays, they move their mouse with little micro movements, or they just like to whip the mouse cursor around on the screen faster than most people's eyes can even move. And third, there are some people who legitimately do believe that they are more accurate in shooters and other games while using an extremely high hardware CPI and lowering their sensitivity in software. But as I mentioned before, a higher CPI usually leads to more noise and a higher error rate for mouse movements. So let's just say the jury is still out on that last one. All right, so it's conclusion time. Is there a proper or best DPI? The short answer is no. As is the case with most computer peripherals, it's gonna come down to personal preference. So there isn't necessarily a CPI that is better than the rest. The good news is that most mice come with adjustable CPI, so all you need to do is experiment with a few different ones, play around with your software sensitivity and cursor speed, and find out what works for you. What we can say for sure is that for the foreseeable future, we've pretty much reached the top end of what we need in terms of CPI, so it's time for mouse manufacturers to work on features that will actually improve the user experience, something some of them are actually starting to do these days. Speaking of improving experiences, Josh from Fractal Design seems to feel like the best way for me to improve the experience that you're having watching this video you know, rather than listening to me talk about, you know, how they've got, you know, great cases and power supplies and cooling products and all that stuff, you know, some kind of sales pitch about their fractal design Scandinavian design would be to instead show you guys my debut performance of Milkshake while wearing this ridiculous wig. So here it is. My Milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours, I'm right. It's better than yours, I could teach you, but I have to charge. All right, Josh, are you happy now? Do you see what you've done to me? I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man with children. And I wear this wig because you make me do this. Anyway, I'm sure the boys in the yard enjoyed it, so good for them. But guys, be sure to check out the Fractal Design link in the video description to give them some kind of... Thanks for sponsoring us, although I'm not sure that I want you to. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment letting me know if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possible episodes. We really do read them. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you learned a little more about DPI from one of my favorite content creators. I like to show you videos like that because becoming an esports professional, whether it's on the competitive side, on the professional side, the knowledge about the industry as well as the gameplay are equally important. And we show you both of those sides because we want to shape you to be the best player as well as the best professional you possibly can be. The Gaming Concept 101 curriculum is a STEM accredited curriculum that will teach you countless different topics from my personal perspective. But I'm not here to make you a better player, I'm here to make you a more educated player so that you can make the best decisions possible as you shape your career in esports. Now, on the competitive side, the Unified Community League, that's to make you a better player. The UCL is a four week long league with seven different competitive titles that allows you to take the utensils that you have at home, whether that's a tablet, a phone, a console, or a PC, to compete for prestige, but also cash prizes. So, if you look in your email, you'll see a link from our sponsor where you can use their special code to register for that league and play online. But first, you gotta get through the curriculum. Because again, we want you to be well-educated as well as a well-versed competitive player. So back to that knowledge you just learned about DPI from one of my favorite content creators, I'm gonna show you another video that'll show you how you can apply it to a phenomenal game like Overwatch. So stay tuned, and then after that, I'm going to show you how to set goals so that we can accomplish some amazing things in our time together. So check out this video on DPI and Overwatch.
ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some tips on mouse sensitivity and also where to aim when you play Overwatch. And this does apply to almost every FPS. Or there are some... Um, hello there. There are some um, Overwatch-specific things which I do want to talk about, especially with the way I've got my sensitivity set up. So is this you, ladies and gentlemen? Do you have your mouse way too sensitive? Now... I think a lot of the people, when they put the mouse like this, it's generally because they want to be able to move onto the targets quick, move onto the targets quick, move onto the targets quick, quickly jump behind and all of that kind of stuff. The problem is when your mouse is too sensitive, it's very, very difficult to do this. So I'm going to try and take these guys out. You can see, that, I mean, I would have killed that guy if I had my normal sensitivity set up. Forced to right click just to make sure I get the hit. Got him, maybe. Where's the next one? Yeah, that's okay. Get this guy. I mean, I totally missed him, which is pretty bad. So what is different with Overwatch, and how is this a little bit different with other FPS games? Well, generally in other FPS games, right, I'd have a really low sensitivity setup. Let's maybe say it would be three, okay? Um, this is really slow, right? It's way more stable, so I can sort of aim, get onto the targets much quicker. You know, I can pick this guy up. I'm moving on to him, and I can sort of move out onto these guys when they come through the door. Um, move on to that guy, move over there. It looks like we're getting a bit of lag, actually. Um, but anyway, we'll go for that. So I can move on to these guys, move on to that, move over there. You know, it, the aiming is way more stable. It's not jumping all over the screen. Problem with this kind of sensitivity, which, as I said, is a sensitivity I would use, a much lower sensitivity um, with FPS games, is over what you can get attacked from behind. So you imagine if I attack this guy here. So if I kill him, then I want to turn around really quick. It's, it's too slow to turn around. You can't do sweeping movements to turn around. It's too slow. And I think you need to... Well, you need to you need to plan for that. So what I do is I increase my sensitivity quite a bit. Now, I've got up to six. Now, this is how I always play Overwatch. So I should be used to this. But this means I can turn around much quicker. So if I'm attacking this direction, I can turn around here. And then I can turn around here. It's not a complete turnaround. I mean, it is if I get the sweeping motion right on the mouse. But it means that I can... I've got a much more stable aiming platform, okay? So I can take, do the damage to people. So if I just go through this section now with the, the sensitivity I always use. So I can do the damage. You know, I, I can level the headshots up much easier than I would before. Because, and then maybe I need to acquire a new target. There's a new target. Quick move off him there to turn around. Maybe I'll melee him or something. I don't know. Maybe we run in and we, we get a bit of that off. We jump around here. We do a bit of this. The fact is, I'm obtaining targets much quicker and much more reliably than I would be if I had a higher sensitivity. Now, like I said at the start of this video, this isn't a mega, super detailed guide. I am not telling you what DPI to have your mouse at. I'm not telling you the specific setup you need your mouse in. What I'm saying is... Consider using a reduced sensitivity to what you're used to. And use the training area as well. Because this will actually... You know, you'll be able to get your aim up here. It's better than trying to cha train on, on in live games, I suppose. See, I need to train because I miss all the bloody time. I'm moving around. I'm trying to get used to the way I move. I'm trying to get used to landing headshots. Getting the reloads in. Maybe I'll jump over here and, I don't know, take that guy up from the back. Quick cheeky reload in. Shoot that guy in the head. Shoot this guy in the head. Get a reload in. Found the hammer. Didn't get him. Reload from the found the hammer. Didn't get him. Because he, he ducked and dived away. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to make this video, guys. Because I noticed a lot of people are using... The, the mouse is way too sensitive. And going back to the way to aim as well. Always keep the bloody crosshair in the middle of the screen. Almost at head height. So you can move around nice and slow. You don't want to do this. This is a cardinal sin. Do not move around looking at the floor like this. You cannot see what's going on. So yeah, just to recap. Consider reducing your sensitivity. Practice in the training uh, range as well. And um, practice keeping your cursor at head height or around head height so you can land headshots a bit more reliably. Also, practice doing fast movements so you can turn around really quick. Sometimes you can see I can do it in two motions. Like I know if I'm getting attacked from the right, I can do that and I'm looking at the right. I'm looking at the left. I'm looking at the right. I'm looking at the left. So if I look to the left and get an attack, acquire a target, take the shot. Now I'm getting shot from behind. I can jump around, acquire the target. A much more stable aiming platform. Because what you don't want is your mouse picking up all of your little tremors and little movements, which it will do. Because if I just jump back to the high sensitivity, you'll see that, well, it picks up 
like a lot of a lot of little movements. I mean, look, look at that. That's not good, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I thought this would help you guys. Let me know if it did help you in the comments below. I've been Stalos. So this is Unit Lost. If you like Overwatch, then subscribe to the channel. And if you like VR content, because also I make a load of that, subscribe to the channel. And if you like podcasts, then subscribe to the channel because we do have a, a wonderful show called Hot Fix, which is magnificent. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you next time. Nope. Too loop. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Hope that it, that video wasn't too exciting or too boring. But regardless, I hope you guys learned something. So now that you've learned about how you can tweak the hardware that you have at home to give yourself that competitive edge or, or just make the video game play more enjoyable for you, as well as the way how you can apply it to some of your favorite games, we got to set some goals. Because I, I, too, want you to achieve amazing things in esports. But not just any goals, we're going to set some smart goals. So take a moment, open up Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or grab a piece of paper, because I'm going to go through these smart goals because I want, to have, I want you to have some measurable goals that you can obtain so that as we go through this class together, you can know yourself how much you've improved as well as you can let me know how much you've improved. Take a second, grab a piece of paper. So SMART goals. SMART is an acronym broken into different words for each letter. And each letter is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Specific, the goal should be identifiable of a specific action or event that can take place. Measurable, the goal and its benefits should be quantifiable. Achievable, the goal should be attainable given available resources. Realistic, the goal should require you to stretch a little bit but allow some likeliness of success. And timely, the goal should state a time and place or a period that can be accomplished. So on that notebook, I'm going to go through a couple of questions that I would like you to answer. But also, if you look in your email, you're going to find this worksheet as well. Welcome back, guys. Now that you've learned about DPI settings and how you can change the hardware that you have at home to get a competitive edge, as well as how you can apply that knowledge about DPI settings to some of your favorite game titles, specifically one like Overwatch. Um, we're going to move forward to setting SMART goals, but first, in that last video, I wanted to make sure that you understood uh, the importance of SMART goals, because with all the countless hours of video games that you're putting in, or the countless hours of building your esports organization or business, we want to make sure that you have measurable goals so that you, as well as we, can track your, your progress and support you in it. So now that you have that Word document, that Google Doc, or a piece of paper, even a note card, we're going to set some SMART goals. So first, we're going to de develop several goals. Five to seven are, are always a really good number to start with because we're going to accomplish these goals over the next year, but measure them in three-month increments. So when you're, when you're creating your actual goals, I want you to set them as declarations, not intentions. I want to apply to schools lacks power. When you write your goals, I want you to write them as, I will apply to three schools, because that's intentional and powerful. Now, once you've written down those goals, I want you to attach a date to those goals so that we can measure your success through them. And that's just not, that, that doesn't have to just be like tomorrow or next week. It can be next month, it can be in three months or over the year, but those measurable goals in that sense will give you a sense of accomplishment as you progress through your esports career. When you're creating those goals, let's be very specific, not too general. A goal like, I want to find a job is too general. We want to set goals that are more specific that say, I want to find a research job in the next five months in this city with this place so that as you transition through life, you can make sure that your decisions that you're making are moving you forward to that very specific goal. Now that we have those goals written down, we have a timeline set for them and they're very specific. We need some accountability partners. So make sure we're sharing those goals with our parents, our guardians, our instructors, 
our best friends, or even our squad mates so that they can hold us accountable as you get better and get closer to those goals. Now, we don't want those goals to collect dust underneath the couch somewhere or uh, in a folder somewhere. We gotta put those goals somewhere that they're viewable on a daily basis. So find something like a bathroom mirror or on your favorite notebook or on your dresser, somewhere that you visit every day and paste those goals there as a constant reminder that you have things that you need to achieve and things that you want to accomplish. But also, those who are close to you, like your parents, your guardians, your best friends, your squad mates, and your teachers can also help you to stay accountable in achieving those goals.